I'm uh, Ryan X. Charles, co-founder and CEO of Yours. All right, after a few minor technical difficulties, we're ready to go now. So uh, we start with this question. Uh, why is there so much trolling, clickbait, fake news on the internet? Uh, we think this is an incentives problem on the internet. We think that basically uh, ads. Uh, we think that the incentives around ads are if you want to fund yourself as a content creator or a public, you know, publication or something of the sort, you have to get lots of people looking at your content, right? So the incentives are not on substance or truth or something like that. It's on let's get lots of page views. And we think this causes what we see on the internet today, which is there's a, there's a lot of good content on the internet, but there's also a lot of really low quality content. There's trolling. For those of us that are in the Bitcoin community, and if you're vocal at all, you have almost certainly been trolled. Um, for those of us you know, that are just consumers of content on the internet, you've probably seen lots of clickbait and fake news and things of that sort. So we think ads are a, a problem, or at least not the only way to monetize content. On the flip side of this, we see the other sort of, uh, the sort of uh, uh, creator point of view. How can I earn money for the content that I create and curate on the internet? Um, you know, again, we have this sort of somewhat you know, biased point of view, having thought about this for a long time, but ads aren't that good for individual content creators and curators. Uh, they work really well for Google and Facebook. Uh, they earn lots of money, but that's because other people are doing all the creating of the content and the viewing of it and whatnot. Um, the individual creators don't earn that much money. Newspapers are struggling today. Um, some do. Sometimes individual creators can earn a lot of money with ads, but it's usually because what they're doing is sort of easily monetizable. I like to give the example of someone who, uh, uh, you know, has like a YouTube video about beauty. You can naturally sell makeup products if that's your, your content. Uh, but if you're doing science, it's very unclear what you would do to fund science. Um, so. One way to look at it is like this. We've got advertisements, we've got subscriptions. So that's another common way to monetize content on the internet. You sign people up on a monthly recurring basis. Uh, there's a missing piece though. There's something else we could do, which is micropayments. Micropayments have been talked about for a long time. It goes back at, at least to the 1990s. Um, but they've only existed in theory until recently. At least we would argue that. Uh, genuine peer-to-peer -peer micropayments really require Bitcoin or something like it to actually do for real. Um, you also need a little bit extra, which I'll talk about in a moment. But actually, micropayments are so powerful. It's not just the third way to monetize content on the internet. It's the all-encompassing way. If you can do micropayments, you can do everything else too. You can do ads and you can do subscriptions and you can do a bunch of other things which I'll, I'll sort of briefly cover here. So at yours, our mission is to improve the quality of content on the internet by getting people paid for creating and curating good content. Um, and the product we've built, uh, it's kind of like medium with a paywall, all right? So this is our V1 uh, alpha product. Um, it's the simplest thing you could imagine doing uh, to monetize content on the internet. So this is basically how it works. Um, the author can create some preview content uh, and some paid content, and they can choose where their paywall goes. So, you know, inside your content, maybe after the intro paragraph or something like that, you place, say, a 10 cent paywall. You can also choose how much it costs. It could cost as little as one cent or even less, or 25 cents or $10, whatever you want to do. Uh, so we call this the purchase model. Uh, this is a very simple model, but we have a number of others that we're working on as well. And it's instructive to go through these because you can see once you have micropayments, you can do a lot of other things. So one of the next models we're going to add is something called the comment model. Uh, you know, uh, so again, like uh, for those of us, uh, particularly in, in, the, uh, in the block size debate in Bitcoin these days, you've probably been trolled if you are out there at all. Um, wouldn't it be interesting if you could set a price of comments on your, your article or your video or whatever, and people have to pay you 10 cents or $1 to comment on your video? Uh, that would probably decrease trolling, right? Because the trolls are not going to say something you know, nasty to you if they actually have to pay you. Or if they do, at least you earn money from it, right? They actually have to pay you a dollar. So we call this the comment model. Um, there are a couple other twists on this. We think that you know, another thing you could do is allow people to tip comments. Wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't it be interesting if you could bump a comment up on the page by tipping the creator of that comment? If you want a comment to be more visible, you pay them some money. That creates a revenue stream for the commenter. 
uh, and allows people that want a comment to be more visible to have a way to do so. So once you have payments, you can start doing a bunch of things like that. Um, another model we have, so people ask us, how are you going to grow your website? Well, when we're ready, we're not ready for this yet for various technical and product reasons, but when we're ready, we're going to turn on something we call the affiliate model. This is a way to earn money by sharing content. So wouldn't it be cool if you see an article that you like and you know there's an audience out there that would love to consume that article? And you're not the creator, you're just a sort of a fan. What if you could earn 10% by sharing that article with people that actually paid for it? Now think about the incentives here. You can sometimes your affiliate systems for like ads, but this isn't ad based. The only way you earn any money by being an affiliate on this system is the other people have to actually buy the article. So that means they definitely get value from it or they wouldn't be buying it. Um, we can also do uh, ads. So just as sort of a proof of sort of concept, um, we're not anti-ad, we just don't think ads are the only way to monetize content on the internet, Sh certainly shouldn't be. So wouldn't it be interesting if the readers, uh, rather than see the actual ad, they see a button that says click here to earn 10 cents to view this ad. That's really how it should be. I mean, it's your time, it's your attention looking at the ad. Shouldn't it be you that's being paid? How come Facebook is earning money for your data and your attention and your time and your content? Shouldn't it be the users that are earning money for that? Well, we can do that with, with micropayments. We can also do subscriptions and we can do it a little bit better once again. Uh, you don't have to do just monthly recurring subscriptions. You could subscribe on a day-to-day -day basis with, uh, whoops, click the one. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, or you could even imagine streaming video where you stream micropayments uh, as you watch something. So there are a lot of other options. Once you, once you have genuine micropayments working, uh, you, know, you can do a, a lot of things besides you know, the, the usual uh, things. So uh, today we have the purchase model working, but the sky's the limit tomorrow. Uh, so briefly, our technology works based on uh, payment channels. It's similar to the Lightning Network. And uh, so for those of you who watched you know, Elizabeth's talk this morning, the technology is similar. Uh, we developed it in parallel to theirs, so it's a different protocol, but we're talking with them about maybe being compatible with them. Um, and it's based on a trustless payment channel hub sort of at the middle, so it looks architecturally centralized, but there's a really important difference, which is the company doesn't ever have access to anybody's money. Only the users do. So it's peer-to-peer -peer in the sense that, you know, Alice wants to send money to Bob. Alice has full possession of that money until Bob does, and our company never has access to it, thanks to the smart contracts uh, like HTLCs and revocation secrets. Um, so it's genuinely peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, micropayments in a web browser, uh, works on Bitcoin and Litecoin, and we're not dependent on SegWit, uh, for those who are clued into that stuff. One thing I want to, I'm going to sort of wrap up my talk here quickly because of the timing, but uh, uh, I have to discuss why we switched to Litecoin. So we were on Bitcoin, we built all of our technology on Bitcoin, it took, uh, I think at this rate, about a year and a half of full-time effort for two people to build all this stuff. And we built it on Bitcoin, uh, but about two months ago, uh, right when we are going to launch our alpha, we realized, oh no, um, fees on Bitcoin have gotten so high that literally just opening a payment channel is cost prohibitive, at least for like a social media network. Uh, the payment channels got so expensive, I think I've got the economics here that imagine you opened a $10 payment channel, uh, well the fees are, and th these fees are as of today, uh, and if you make predominantly one-way payments, you're paying about a 45% fee, which is extremely high. So that means you gotta fund your channels with a lot more than $10 to have sensible fees. So basically Bitcoin stopped working for us, and we went looking around, Litecoin worked, because it's almost technically the same as Bitcoin, so all of our software worked, but you know, uh, w but with, at least for right now, it has lower fees. Um, so we are big advocates for scaling Bitcoin on chain and uh, I'm going to say this in such a way as I know it's going to rile up at least some people here who are, who are probably troll me on social media. I'm just joking. You probably, nobody at this conference will troll me, but uh, other people will. Um, we want radical scaling. I mean, even with payment channels uh, and the, you know, the sort of lightning-ish technology, um, it's not enough. Um, so the, the statistics I like to give to people, and this is oddly missed in this debate, um, with one megabyte blocks, it would take 30 years to send everyone in the world a single transaction. So that's a lower bound for opening a payment channel. That means it is definitely not possible for most people to ever open a payment channel with tiny blocks. We need radically larger blocks uh, to actually reach a global audience. I already discussed Litecoin, let's skip through that. 
So our mission is to improve the quality of content on the internet, and we think micropayments are the way to do this. You can do everything if you can do micropayments. Uh, the basic product is it's like Medium with a paywall, uh, but we have a lot of other payment models we're working on as well, and we think that uh, we, we like the idea of giving uh, power to our users to really decide what works best for them and their audience and their content. Um, our alpha product is live at yours.org. Uh, and let's help Bitcoin scale so that we actually can reach a global audience uh, with Bitcoin and with whatever other cryptocurrencies. Uh, we need one that scales. So thank you. Yeah, so the question is, you know, we solve the technology, we have micropayments at work, but like, are people actually going to pay 10 cents for a piece of content? So we have a bunch of answers to this. Um, there are a lot of other things we can do. So we're actually not sure. Um, you know, the, the first answer is uh, there are some people, there are a lot of creators that like this idea. It's unclear right now whether there are enough consumers that will actually be willing to pay 10 cents. And there are a lot of theories uh, about this. I would argue it's never really been tried. So we're going to try it first. If it doesn't work, we, we have things like, we have all sorts of other ways to monetize, like the comment model that I mentioned. We, we have something like 15 different models that we can run experiments on and see sort of what works. So that's the answer. I actually, I think that it, we need to actually run the experiment and see whether people will actually be willing to pay 10 cents. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll see. Get, get a large audience in the sense of like partnering with some type of you know, existing publication or something like that. Is that what you mean? Um, yeah, so we thought that, you know, there are a lot of reasons why we made our own platform and are trying to build our own community. Um, you know, first of all, if we can, you know, it's hard to explain to people what we're doing. So if we can just do it, um, it's obvious because then you can see it and try it and use it and stuff. Um, it's better for us a business if this works, but it might not work. So it is something we're considering. Like what, what we'll do is we call it our business backup plan is we're just going to like sort of license or sell our, our micropayments technology to publications. And uh, there are actually a lot of people that are interested in that. I mean, from the creator point of view, they do really like the idea of charging people 10 cents to look at their content. It's the consumer side that's sort of questionable whether they're actually going to pay. I think they will if the content is good. But anyway, yeah. So that's sort of a backup plan. Any, anything else? So that's a great question. What type of content are we going to get on the platform? Um, we're, we're, it, it could be anything, right? Like it could be videos, it could be, you know, audio or whatever. Um, so we describe it as medium with a paywall because you can embed stuff in your article. So it's actually pretty generic. You can create an article with a video inside of it, or you could just create an article that is only a video. So it's every type of content. And the subject matter right now is, I, I didn't look at it today, but usually it's about 50% cryptocurrency and then 50% other stuff. So we have a very crypto heavy audience as our core user base that's interested in putting up with all the bugs and whatnot that you see at, at this stage. Okay, I don't see any more questions, so thank you.